Hey everybody, this is Verna. It is Monday, March 27th, 2023. We're almost to April and early spring. Kind of chilly here tonight, but um, I have some fun for you. And thank you for joining me. Let's see here. Um, I want to make sure that you guys can hear me. I'll enlarge this. Me. Hey, Mom. How are you? Hey, Mom. How are you? Okay. I need to mute that. Hey, Mom. How are you? Okay. I need to mute that. Okay. Sorry, you guys. There we go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, thank you for sharing, Margaret. Um, if you comment and share, you can be put into a drawing for some goodies, usually gems. And this week's winner was my mom. She's always on here, always supporting me. Thanks, Mom. Oh, you were calling your rhinos. You probably did a way better job than I did. <laughs> but anyways, um, if you uh, are interested in buying um, or if you're interested in getting the free kits for three of the cards that I'm um, going to show you um, tonight, then you just, two of each of the three, then um, you just have to place an order in my online store this week of $35 or more using this host code right here. Or if um, by any chance, uh, I, I usually try to put the embedded host code link so you can just click on that and shop. And if your order is 30, more than $35, I will add a little package of these little gems. And they are called, if it's $50 or more, the Enamel Dot Essentials. So um, anyways, this is a new fold um, that's come out lately, and it's called the Seagull Fold. This is Because it looks like a bird from the top. And you can see it there. Um, but what's cool about it is it folds up and you can, we can get it into a regular sized envelope. So isn't that cool? Folds right up like that. They're not hard to make, really fun to make. And I'm using a new um, bundle. It's called Rhino Ready. And it has these adorable... Uh, images in it. You're built tough. You're stronger than you think. It's a great day. Hope your, your birthday is wild. And this is one of the uh, sets that is available online only and it's not in any of the catalogs. And it's I really love it, especially like for kids. Um, it has great dyes to it. And Let's see, there's grass and more grass. There's some tropical leaves. There are three different rhino shapes for the three different stamped rhinos. Um, here's another tree. Oh, there's a little party hat. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure on that yet, but anyways, it's a really cool set. So to make this card, um, we're going to use two we're going to begin with two pieces of uh, basic black card stock that are cut at eight and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I've already cut those. I'm going to bring them in and we're going to score them both the same. Also, I have some more of those cards to show you that I've done with other stamp sets. All right, so here's our two pieces of card stock. These are eight and a quarter by four and a quarter. I've seen this card done by um, Susan Campfield, uh, Mary at Stamps and Lingers, um, Kylie Bertucci, and everybody does them a little bit different, but inspiration was from all of them, really. I've looked at how they did them, and but anyways, they're really cool because they stand up, and uh, you can... Um, also put them in the envelope. They'll fit in the little envelope. So, um, what else? Oh, so 
we're gonna start scoring this. We're gonna score each of these the same. And again, you will get a PDF tutorial also in your kit if you decide to place an order with me this week. Um, and you'll get the PDF tutorial included. But I'm gonna say the measurements right now. Um, so this is four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. You need two of these. The scoring is at two and a quarter. I'm gonna move it up to two and a quarter. And this is a scoring blade on my trimmer. The other darker blade is a cutting blade. Two and a quarter, four. And then we're gonna pull the arm out here and score at six and a quarter. And the six and a quarter mark is like right on this um, dark gray space right there on the trimmer. All right, so, and we'll redo this again so you can see it. Our first fold here, we're gonna do a mountain fold. That means this is folded, so this looks like, has a peak to it and it's like the mountain top. We're gonna burnish that. This next fold is gonna be a valley fold. Creates a little valley. And then we're gonna do another valley fold. This last one is gonna be a valley fold also. So we start with a mountain fold and then two valley folds. So it looks like this. All right, we're gonna bring our other piece in. We're gonna score exactly the same. All right, so we're gonna score it at two and a quarter. four, and six and a quarter to this little line right here. And we're gonna fold this exactly the same way. So um, our first fold is a mountain fold. And you'll notice that this flap is wider than this flap on the end here, okay? So this is our um, mountain, our mountain fold. I folded it the wrong way. There's our mountain fold. Okay. Now we're gonna do a valley fold. Making a little valley in here. And another valley fold. This is gonna be another little valley. All right, so we've got the two pieces are exactly the same. They're the same size. They're scored the same on each one and folded the same. All right, so our wide flaps, which was our mountain fold, we're gonna put one on each end, okay? Wide flap, wide flap. And then our smaller flaps are on the inside. And we're gonna butt those right up next to each other like this. So these become our wings on the outside of the card here, okay? And what I'm gonna do to hold those together temporarily is I'm, and I haven't seen anyone else do this, but maybe someone has. I'm gonna put some tear and tape, and you wanna line them up exactly, but butt them right up next to each other. Some tear and tape right across there to temporarily hold that. I'm gonna put, put it in three spots. I'm not taking the backing off yet. All right. So I have also cut a piece of basic black cardstock. And this is the center piece. And this piece is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And this is gonna be centered and adhered right onto this piece in the middle here. All right, and I'm gonna lay it on there right now. I'm just lining up the top edge and the bottom edge, and I'm gonna bring a pencil in and I'm just gonna mark it right here so I know this is where I'm gonna wanna lay that when I get the glue on the other um, pieces of cardstock. All right, so 
Now I'm going to take the tear and tape off, the backing off it. And sometimes it's easier to do it with your take your pick tool. And then I'm going to bring in my liquid glue. And this is the same as our regular glue in the green bottle, except I have put it in a needle, a fine point um, nose. You can get these on Amazon. And I'm just going to run adhesive or glue on these two smaller flaps that are right up next to each other. And they're just held kind of temporarily in place with tear and tape. Actually, the tear and tape will stay there. I feel like I'm running out of glue here. Come on. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in my piece, my square, my large square. And I'm going to lay that right on there. I'm lining up the pencil marks on each side and you wanna make sure you're, um, it's at the edges at the top and the bottom. All right, so this, is, this makes our mechanism that pops up like that. Well, that's not supposed to pop up quite like that. Okay, and I'm just gonna erase that. All right, so um, we've got, this is glued onto there, and this is the front of the card, and this is the back right here. All right. Hey, Carol. So um, now we're gonna take, um, I've made some mats. We're gonna mat each one of these, and I'm matting it with uh, Mango Melody, because that is, um, in the designer series paper that I'm using. I have a large center mat here that's uh, four and an eighth by four and an eighth. And I'm gonna go ahead and we'll use uh, Seal Plus tape runner. I thought I brought it over here and is it here? Hang on, there it is on my counter. And uh, so we're just going to, and I'm having trouble with this tape runner tonight. Let me see if I can fix it. Okay. Usually I don't have a problem with them. We'll put it back together. Hopefully we'll be all set. I'm glad you did too, Carol. I'm always on at um, 6.30 Mondays, Eastern Standard Time. Nope, that's not gonna work. All right, I'm gonna go back to my liquid glue here. I gotta grab a pen, it's plugged. Okay. This will work better now. Okay, so I'm just adding my adhesive on the back of this matte layer. Again. Okay, and this is going to sit right inside that square in the center. I 
All right. And then um, I have four pieces of Mango Melody and that are all the same. And they are two and an eighth by four and an eighth. And they're gonna go, one's gonna go on each end here. Wow, you have snow on everything? We have rain. Hey, Chris. Oh, good grief. This is so annoying. All right, I gotta get my other seal. Nope, I grabbed the glue. I'm just gonna use the regular bottle. I'm not sure what's wrong with my little bottle there. Okay. So, yeah, we're putting one of these on each end. So we'll put a layer here. And one on the other end. Now this card, there's really not very much room to write anywhere on the front of it. So I'm gonna flip it over and um, I'm gonna put two panels right here of that same first measurement. I think it was two and an eighth by four and an eighth. That's why you need to cut four of them. And I'm just... So one is gonna go right here. And then another one's gonna go right beside it. And this little silicone mat that I'm using the glue on is great because um, no adhesive will stick to it. And if you get the glue on it, you just wait till it dries, it'll brush right off or wipe right off. It's a handy little tool, and it'll also get your tape runners going if they if you're having trouble with them. Okay, then I have two more panels. They're gonna be right here. These are one and five eighths by four and an eighth. And I'm only making one of these tonight, um, but I've got I'm gonna show you some other ones that I made with some different stamp sets. There's that one, and then we have one more for the other side. Yeah, we don't have snow yet, but we have, it's raining. All right, so we've got, this is our back. We've got two on the center of the back here and then our front. Okay, now you need, if you're gonna do a designer series paper that has scenery across uh, the front, you wanna cut it all in one piece. And I'm using designer series paper from Enjoy the Journey. This is great for any kind of scenery, um, it, like a scenery card going across the front. Um, it has uh, great uh, scenery, like that. Look at that. That's upside down. I know you're seeing it upside down, but um, there's one with the trees here. So I'm gonna show you another card that I did with that. But work if we need, want this, um, I want this orangey piece right here. And it's gonna be four inches wide. So I'm gonna bring my trimmer in. And 
you want to decide, like, I want these mountains in it, probably up to here. So I'm going to turn it this way. And this isn't four inches. I'm going to have to go back and cut it down a little bit. So decide what portion of that scenery that you want to include in that four inches. And then I'm going to turn it and line it up and cut off the bottom part. Strip, it looks like three quarters or of an inch or so, maybe half an inch. All right, so I've got my four inches. Now I'm gonna cut this right straight across in a row um, as to how I want it sitting on this panel. So the first one is going to be, sorry, I dropped my directions. The first uh, DSP piece is going to be two inches by four. The second piece is um, one and a half. All right. The middle piece is going to be four because this is for our middle panel. And then we're gonna go back to one and a half. And what was the first one? Two. All right, so I'm gonna line them up so you can see them in order here. And get the trimmer out of here. All right, so these are our pieces. Now, if you want to do any stamping on your designer series paper, now is the time to do it before you adhere it onto your card. So th this is how they're going to line up. So you have this nice mountain view scenery in the background on the card. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I want to stamp the sentiment up here. It's a birthday sentiment from the rhinos and it, sa it says hope your birthday is wild and I'm using memento black ink all right let's see if I can get this straight on camera hope your birthday is wild okay so that's all the stamping I'm going to do on the front there. Now let's put these on our card. And then we're gonna add some die cuts. So we've got our, uh, oh, that's cool. So we're gonna go, this goes first. And again, if you place an order with me this week, you will get the PDF tutorial. And I have some other cards to show you too that I've done. But it's really a nice card because you can stand it up and enjoy it or whoever you give it to will enjoy it. All right, and then if you wanted to do any ribbon or anything, you'd wanna do it before, like wrap around ribbon, you'd wanna do it before you adhere your designer series paper or your layer that's gonna be layered on a piece of cardstock that you want ribbon or twine to go around. You see how we've got that nice scenic um, picture going on? because we cut it in, in order. Hey, Rosalie. We are doing a flying seagull card. Okay, and 
All right, so we've got that. We've got all our designer series paper on there. Now we're gonna put a rhino on the front and I'm using Smoky Slate and I'm just gonna stamp the rhino in memento ink on my Smoky Slate paper. And the dies, if you have the dies to the set, the dies will cut that out. And then I have stamp and blends. And I'm gonna color the whole body with a light smoky slate, stamp and blend. And this is an alcohol marker, so you want to put something underneath it because it'll bleed onto whatever is underneath. I'm taking my brush tip and just coloring him in. Just like that. Yeah, so we've had three mama pigs have babies in the last couple weeks. I think I may have told you that the last one, she had 13 and only one was born alive. <clears throat> so something was wrong with her or something went wrong there. And then the other two had 15. Well, one had 15 and one had 13, I think. And they're, one of them, two of them died, and I think one may have died from the other one, too. Okay, so our rhino is all colored in. And I've got the light, or I've got the fine, the bullet end. There's a bullet end and a brush end on these. And I'm going to take the dark color. I'm going to use the bullet end, and I'm just going to kind of um, go over where there's artist marks, or I want the tail to be darker. And there's little lines here, little lines there. We'll make his toes dark. And that smile. And there's a little bit of stitched, looks like stitching right there. I'm gonna make the horn yellow and the bird's beak yellow. And we'll come in with our dark Bermuda Bay and color the bird in. Okay, so our rhino is basically done. And I've already got one die cut out. He is done and he is right there. So I've already die cut out also a tree and just trying to get a hold of it here. Okay, these are these are really cool. They just look like jungle or brush, the trees in the African brush. So I'm gonna put glue on the back with a sponge because those branches are so fine. And so here's my little sponge. I'm gonna make a little pool of glue right here. And we'll just dab the sponge in it and I'm just gonna go over the back of the tree like this. And if I had my fine tip glue, I would probably dab it with that. 
okay it's easier to do it with that now I want the tree down about like that because we've got the long foliage thing that's going to go across like this let me see if I've got it down too far let's see here oh we don't have the rhino on there that yeah that's good all right so Maybe I want it to go up a little bit. All right, so let's go with that and can move this out of the way. We need some dimensionals. On the back of our leaves here. This So this is gonna be like a silhouette on the front but you could totally color everything in and do it with colors and then i've got a few little um the mini dimensionals I'll take those out Oh, acacia, okay. I did not know that. All right. So we've got a dimensional kind of showing the bottom of this one right here. All right, there's our tree. And we're just gonna glue the rhino. I think I'll put them like that under the tree. He's such a cute guy. Okay, and let's decorate some of these sides here. We've got two rhino, rhino silhouettes, and I think I'll put one that way and one this way. Yeah, this would be a really cute kid's card. Put one on one end and one on the other. And what's nice about, what's nice about doing a silhouette is uh, you can turn the paper over and use the opposite side of what the die cut normally, normally would be for a stamped image. Let's do some leaves here. Tropical leaves. Put the bigger one at the bottom. And a little glue there. Well, thank you, Margaret. And how about one there? And then I've got some grass that's die cut. And I'll lay this down maybe right here. If you wanted to make it even, you could put these leaves over there. Okay, so um, this is how it looks when it's from the top when you stand it up. And then if you want to put it in an envelope and mail it, these fold in like this, and it fits in our envelopes. Isn't that cool? All right, so the back, now the, on the back here, 
you can stamp something out or uh, you can stamp another sentiment. You could put some dies. I'm not gonna do it. Oh, I'm gonna put some gems on here. Now, these technically are navy blue, but they really, uh, you know, are black looking. So, they don't scream navy blue when you put them on. Don't use me, I'm navy blue, okay. So that's that card, and I want to show you uh, a couple other cards that I did. Um, this one I did with uh, that Playing in the Rain. Um, this is with, uh, I just cut out, or I die cut, but you can fussy cut the little animals out. And the back of it is I just put stamped the flowers and colored them in. I put a layer of the basic white over the mats. And, and again, this you fold these in like this. Fold the ends in and that'll go in a regular card. All right. Um, I did this one I did for Easter. And this is with the new um, online only, this um, Gilded Designer Series paper. And I don't know if you can see it because of the, but I've used the fine shimmer paper, the lavender on there. And I've used the Distress Gold for the cross and cut it with the Stylish Shape dies. Daffodil and heat embossed, he is risen there. And on the back, um, this is from the Rejoice With Him stamp set. Okay, that's that card. And then this card is probably my favorite. Um, I use the same Enjoy the Journey designer series paper. And all I did was stamp. I used my Stamparatus, and I stamped the bear. This is from the Mountain Mountain Air stamp set. That one, but you could easily, you could easily uh, die cut trees. Die cuts would be pretty on this. I've got the owl on the end, and then the back. I've got the layers. I've just stamped some grass on the back. So um, for ordering this week, I, I will include two of the kits for this one and two of the kits for this one and two of the kits for the, the Rhino one. And I really hope you've enjoyed. I hope you can make some of these. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, it was a fun, it was really fun to learn and fun to share too. So... Anyways, I want to do one this week and I'll post it with lots of flowers, something feminine, because these aren't really, well, the, the Easter one is a little bit, but um, the others really aren't that feminine. If you do the cross with the stylish shaped dies, I cut, I die cut the pieces out. This is the long one. This is the thick, shorter one. And then I cut like an eighth of an inch off each side on those so um, it just looked better anyways uh, thanks a lot you guys and I'll be back next Monday take care